I honestly don't know if this is gonna be the way to fix it, but if I don't try, I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. So I was born a easy go, happy baby, I guess you could say. At least that's what my mom says. And I was also pretty good at math, because as you can see here, I was balancing my parents' checkbook before I was even one. Well, little did that little Isaac know that not even a year later, he would lose all his hair. I had developed a disease called alopecia universalis. This happens when your autoimmune system, responsible for defending your body against foreign invaders and viruses and such, mistakes its own body as a foreign invader and attacks it. And in this case, it was my hair follicles that it attacked. Well, fast forward 10 years later, I was peeing anywhere from two to three times an hour. I guess you could say I was the urination king. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good title to hold, but I, but I held it, that's for sure. This was because my body was trying to stabilize my blood sugar levels. So my blood sugar was three, at least three times higher than any normal human beings should ever be. So in order to stabilize, it was putting all this sugar into my urinary tract and trying to piss it out. I found out I was diabetic when I, I was going on a field trip and it was about two hours away. We had to get on a bus and man, two hours, there's six peas in there for me. And I was like, okay, I can make it if I pee right before and hopefully right at the end of the two hours, I can rush to the bathroom and I'll make it. Well, I was wrong. And about halfway there, I let it out. <laughs> and you know, like most bus seats, they make them so they're not porous, so that like when little kids spill drinks and whatnot on the seat, that it won't bed itself into the, the actual fabric of the seat and cause a stain. So I remember peeing and the, the liquid of my pee building up on the seat and eventually rolling down on the backsides of my knees on the ground. And at the same time, we were going up a hill. So all of the pee started to run down towards the back of the bus and the girl behind me on the bus started to scream. Yeah, after that we decided that I needed to go to the doctor and see what was going on with my body and we found out that my blood sugar was three times higher than it should be, and I was type one diabetic. This happens when your autoimmune system thinks that your beta cells in your pancreas are enemies, and it attacks them, and it leaves you without your beta cells. Therefore, you can't produce insulin, and your blood sugar just skyrockets. A couple years later, my nails started to develop these extreme ridges one by one. Uh, I've gone to a few dermatologists and they don't really know what it is, but they think it's related to my alopecia because your nails and your hair are very similar, but who knows. Then around the same time, I started developing some stomach issues. Like I, at first I became extremely la lactose intolerant. So like a molecule of lactose found in dairy would destroy me and it still does to this day. But progressively, as time's gone on, it's gotten worse and worse. And trying to identify all these things that I'm allergic to has been a challenge. I came to this point in my life where every day I saw my body get worse and worse and worse. There was this like lack of acceptance of who I am. And like, you know, like, like, why do I have to deal with this shit? Like, I don't even want to deal with this. Like, I think that coupled with just emotionally intense situations in my life caused me to have a really deep depression for a couple of years. In early 2019, I tried to commit suicide. You know, it was, I felt really hopeless.
And I think the worst part of the whole thing was seeing all the people that were giving me love and they just wanted a little bit of love back, but I was too busy distracting myself from the way I felt about myself to even notice that they needed love. You know, like I hurt a lot of people, but I, I mean, I hurt myself the most, that's for sure. About six months later, I had the opportunity to participate in a few life-changing experiences. Uh, I will go into detail about what these experiences were in a future video. It completely cured my depression. It made me value how much I love myself. And like showed me like, oh, I, I love being me. Like this is amazing. And then it also gave me the tools to show me how to live in my mind and in the environment that I was in to not have that depression come back. It was powerful. You know, I'm forever grateful. An interesting side effect was I noticed that I started to grow back some hair. It seemed that my nails started to smooth out for a month or two after that experience. Unfortunately, these effects were temporary. However, it sparked this curiosity in me and I started doing a lot of research and found that there's quite a few people out there killing their autoimmune diseases with unorthodox methods. A lot of the problems with these personal accounts was they weren't supplying the data needed for me to be able to like take it to heart. I mean, I have my, my slight personal experience, but data means a lot more than opinion or your personal experience, like data is proof. I think a lot with me starting this YouTube channel and like sharing my experiences, like showing, hey, this is my starting benchmark and then I've gone on this journey and this is my ending benchmark. And like, so this has had an effect on me or it hasn't had an effect on me. Best case scenario, I heal all my autoimmune diseases and then people can see that and then they can go out there and heal themselves. Worst case scenario, which is also a good case scenario, is I go down this path, nothing substantial happens, then no one else has to wonder like, oh, maybe I should try this, or oh, that's obviously not a path I want to go down. You know, I think it's it's gotten to a point where I have to ask myself, how much do I love myself? Do I love myself enough to try anything in order to make myself feel better? in order to heal myself. Because if I just stick to the Western way of thinking, I'll just constantly be band-aiding these issues where, I mean, I'm very grateful for insulin, right? Insulin is giving me the ability to survive, but it's not fixing the core issue as to why my body is destroying the, every beta cell that I produce. I honestly don't know if this is gonna be the way to fix it, but if I don't try, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. And I'm just going to sit there as I watch my body die every day and be like, well, I mean, you could have tried that, but you didn't. And now we're just dying. And yeah, like, fuck that. Fuck that. I love myself enough to try. And I love, I mean, I would be honestly sad to lose my bald head. I love this thing. I really do. I mean, I mean, I, I don't like when it gets sunburned, but <laughs> like and subscribe. And if you want to help me out financially with the journey, head over to Patreon and supporters of Patreon get to pick a future hairstyle for me. We can get pretty ridiculous over there. Much love, everyone. Big chillin'.